Welcome to Washington In Focus. I'm Brett Davis. Joining me today is the Center Square's investigative reporter, T.J. Martinell. You recently authored a piece headlined, Former Criminals Deemed Marginalized Under Washington State Worker Training. I'll be honest, I don't even really know where to begin with this story other than to say it involves Washington state government's efforts related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Your story focused on the Washington State Utilities and Transportation Commission's uh, Pro-Equity Anti-Racism or PAIR program, which was on full display at a recent meeting. Tell us about what you found. Yeah. So the important thing to keep in mind is that this is something that everyone in the entire state government, all state agencies, employees, and the agency heads, they all have to go through this training. So when we discuss these things, just realize everyone is being taught this. They have to go through it. And one of the things that couldn't help but notice on the UTC's website is a direct link to download a privilege matrix. And it classifies people under either a dominant group or a marginalized group and what the oppression is. So if you are a, say, able-bodied person, meaning you're fit, you, you have your, you don't have a disability, you're considered a dominant group and a marginalized group is someone with a disability. A person who is a, a citizen is considered to be dominant over someone who's not a citizen. But the one that really I had to do a double take was where it's uh, the dominant group is persons without justice system involvement, which is a very fancy way of saying somebody who has not been accused, charged or convicted of a crime. And then the the marginalized group are convicted and incarcerated individuals. So this is what people need to realize. If you are a law abiding citizen, you've never been accused of a crime, you've never broken the law, you've never you've never been charged, convicted, whatever, you are considered dominant and a violent criminal like Gary Ridgway is considered to be a, a marginalized group. Because it doesn't say like nonviolent offenses. If you're a convicted or incarcerated individual, so if you murdered, raped, stole, or all three at the same time, you're considered marginalized under this privilege matrix, which is what state employees and agency heads are being taught. This one stands out because it really helps explain a lot of public policy in the state regarding public safety and regarding crime and how criminals are treated. Now, have you been able to find out what the thinking is behind these programs? They seem very divisive, you know, dividing people into different categories. How does that bring people together, you know, in terms of a common goal and whatnot as a state employee? Well, it's going to cause a lot of problems because how do you define some of these things? I mean, like, for example, wealthy is a dominant group and poor working class, middle class is a considered a marginalized group. Well, what I define wealthy by the standards of somebody in parts of Africa, we're all wealthy. Another one is what happens if it, so middle class is considered a marginalized group. So what if you're middle class, but you're English speaking, that's considered a dominant group. Not speaking English is considered a marginalized group. So, so you're marginalized, but you're dominant. Another one is this is the quote, white ideal body shape standard. What is that? Marginalized group is body sizes and shapes that are considered overweight or too tall or generally not considered the norm or ideal. I, the problem with that is go look up the CDC's you know commentary on obesity and overweight being overweight. Like there are medical implications for that. This, this isn't just this isn't a, an arbitrary standard that was set by a bunch of random people. It's it's almost as if saying that smoking two packs of cigarettes for sixty years you know, thinking that that's not healthy is a, it's an ideal health standard. I'm having trouble wrapping my head around this. Yeah. It's, I, I think the the problem is that yeah, one, w- what's this based on? What, what facts, data, statistics, and also what is this intended to accomplish as far as government efficiency, effectiveness, proficiency? How does this make people do their jobs better? And another question that would be good to ask is how has it made people get along better in government and get their work done? Because they're there for some somebody who's with the Department of Natural Resources, DNR, they have a specific role to fulfill. For example, if you're working with the wildland um, or wildfire division, your job is to put out wildfires, protect private property and government property and, you know, ensure that the state doesn't go up in flames. How is this going to help them put out fires faster? Yeah, all this DEI stuff seems to be out of their purview. You mentioned in your story that some of the UTC commissioners, or maybe all of them, have already gone through some of this training. I see mentioned in your story something called trauma-informed management, and I guess they had to read the books White Fragility and uh, The Sum of Us, What Racism Costs Everyone and How We Can Prosper Together. Yeah, it was interesting about how they're being taught this. And for people who don't know about the UTC, they help set utility rates 
And so my question is, what does that have to do with their work? I, they, I didn't include this in the story, but the irony is that one of the people speaking at the meeting that I was covering said that the they were getting difficulty trying to get more people who are from other countries to provide feedback to the state on some of these issues uh, regarding UTC rates and, and other programs that they do, because these people come from countries where the government doesn't ask for your opinion. And if you give it, you go to jail. Ironies abound. So I imagine there will be more on this in the future. I look forward to more of these stories, uh, keeping uh, people informed about what's going on in state government. Definitely. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For TJ Martinell, this is Brett Davis. Please subscribe and thanks for listening. 